Welcome to Stories with a Twang. I'm Nathan. I wrote today's episode entitled Living Retail. Just a heads up, there is a suicide in the story. Trish woke up at about 9.15 a.m., quickly got dressed in her usual work attire, grabbed some trash for breakfast, and ran out the door. If she was going to make it to the store for her 10 a.m. shift, she needed to hurry. Trish had just made it on the light rail before it left, and two stops later she got off. Walking past the multiple tents on her way to work was normal, if not annoying. She had gotten used to the routine, don't look at them, hold your breath, and walk as fast as you can. The usuals were there, all looking her up and down. She did still feel sorry for them, but she had to make it to work before she ended up where they were. Before she knew it, she could see the large blue-roofed building ahead of her, just to the right of the dirty sidewalk. She rounded the corner when the parking lot came into view. Everything looked the same as every other day, but there was something new today. The main entrance had police tape blocking it off. Luckily, the building had other entrances close by. She had to clock in before 10.06 or she would be counted as late. Inside the police tape, she saw several officers looking up toward the blue roof. Looks like a promise of an exciting day. She thought to herself. Passing through the automatic door, she dodged a forklift on her way to a computer to clock in. Typing as fast as she could and hitting the clock in button brought up a dialogue box letting her know she was late. Damn it! She exhaled as she hit yes to acknowledge her tardiness. On her way to the break room, she noticed several employees rushing about, looking more stressed than usual. Hey, what's up with all the police outside? She shouted at one of them, but they must have not heard her. Coming into the break room, she found it odd that there was no one in the room. There was usually always someone taking their break or just killing time, but not right now. She really wanted to know what was going on outside. Emerging from the break room with her very fashionable red vest on, she noticed something else. The overhead music that is always on was non-existent. It's kind of creepy in here without the terrible music. She thought. Finally, she made her way to the customer service desk. She could not help but be overwhelmed by how many customers were waiting at the desk. Most were waiting in the returns line and did not look happy. Can someone please tell me what's going on outside? She said with a little frustration in her voice. There's some dude on the roof and the police have been trying to get him down. Are you serious? She said with utter shock. Well, I guess anything is possible at this place. Every day is just a new adventure. Hey, Trish, her manager said from the doorway of the office. Can you please run up and get some more shopping bags from upstairs? Self-checkout is out and they are already complaining. All right, said Trish, trying to seem enthused, considering she needed to put on a happy face for her manager, thinking of how she was late. Oh, and can you check and see if the customer's dryer is ready? He is here to pick it up. You know, I would look myself, but with all the craziness outside, I need to stay here. So, with a smile on her face and the customer's order number written on a dirty sticky note, Trish made her way to the back of the crowded store. At least a dozen people seeing her red vest either asked stupid questions or asked about what was going on outside. Oh, we just need police presence here now because people keep stealing. Was the first thing she could think to say. When she finally got to the back of the store, she went into the employee-only area. Here, they seemingly stored everything that they did not have room for out on the floor. She spied the stairs on the right side of the room, and to her annoyance, the gate and chain that locked access to the stairs was open and the chain and lock left hanging. This usually meant that there was somebody upstairs already. Leaving the lock like it was, she began to climb the dirty stairs. With every step, there was a sickening groan followed by bone-snapping pops. They really need to do something about these stairs, she said out loud. She reached the top where she read the old graffiti provided by the store's own employees and rolled her eyes involuntarily. She decided to look for the customer's dryer first, considering it would be the hardest thing to find. In front of her was a sea of brown. Appliances of all shapes and sizes lay on the floor in a strange order that made little sense to the people who put them there. The rows of fridges looked like dusty walls. She could not help but think how creepy it would be if there was someone hiding down one of them. That thought reminded her, where was that person that left the gate unlocked? She could hear nothing except for the buzzing of the old fluorescence above her. She did get a whiff of a sickening smell. She looked to her right to see a large garbage can filled with trash. Clearly, no one had taken it out, even after the management had put a stop to employees taking their breaks up here. Trish finally got to the section with the dryers all lined up and began looking on all of the boxes for the little sticker that had pick up later printed on it. 
After a few minutes and brands later, she finally found it. She began pulling the box out of the line of seemingly identical dryer boxes when she heard something other than the sound of cardboard on concrete. Was it a voice? Maybe they finally turned the music back on then, and she was just hearing it echo its way back up the stairs. Now with the dryer found, she needed to find a dolly to move it to the large roll-up door in the wall close to the stairs. Power equipment was used to very shakily get things down. The drop to the concrete below always freaked Trish out. It's not that she was afraid of heights. She was just afraid of what concrete can do to a human from that distance. She found an appliance dolly on the far end of the room, and when she walked back to where the dryer was, she heard the creaking of the stairs and knew that someone was coming up. Hey, Trish, said David. He works in paint, so why would he be coming up here? Trish thought. Trish, you were taking too long up here, so they told me to come get the shopping bags for self-checkout. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine, said Trish. I just couldn't find the appliance dolly. Okay, I'll tell them that you're about to be finished, said David, a box of shopping bags in his hands. Oh, and can you tell someone that I need help getting this dryer down? Trish yelled at David. Will do, he yelled from halfway down the noisy stairs. Trish turned her attention back to getting the dryer on the dolly. When she jumped from the sound of the large roll-up door beginning to open, Trish froze. Who hit the button to raise the door? She thought. David had been far away when she heard it move, so it could not have been him. She cautiously made her way with the dryer toward the now-opened OSHA violation. There did not seem to be anyone down below either, ready to help her take the dryer down. She pulled out her work phone to page for assistance with the dryer when she saw something on the floor. To the right of the door, there was a pile of empty junk food wrappers, all items that they sold downstairs at the registers. Why can't no one respect where we work? She picked up the items and added them to the overflowing trash can that was nearby. Trish then heard her work phone buzz to life right after she heard the music return far too loud than it was supposed to be. One of the managers said, Well, as you might have noticed, the music's back on, which means the guy got off the roof. The police just left, so maybe we can go back to normal for the rest of the day. Trish breathed a sigh of relief that she did not have to answer customer questions about it anymore, but also that the guy was safe and not a pancake on the asphalt outside. She suddenly heard footsteps behind her and turned around and saw someone that definitely did not work there running toward her. She knew him. He hung around the light rail station. He always had the same stained Adidas tracksuit on. He was not very tall, maybe about 5'5". Five five. He used to walk around the store and talk to anyone who would listen. All he really wanted was for someone to listen to him, but people rarely did. Trish did, though. Just once, before she had to go help a cashier at a register, she felt bad for him. She was seemingly frozen to the spot, but she quickly realized that he was not running at her, but to the open roll-up door. Before she could do anything to intervene, the man had run out of the opening and fell to his death on the cold concrete below. Trish felt as if this were all a dream. That really just happened? She thought to herself. She would hear the sickening, wet popping sound of the man's landing playing over and over in her head. The police came after about an hour. They seemed annoyed to be called back to the store after they had already been there earlier that day. Trisha's managers did not seem to be too concerned or bothered by what had just taken place. A man had lost his life, but all they could do was complain about how they had to close the store, and this would in turn make them miss their quarterly goal and the bonus that they were going to miss now. Trish sat in the break room in complete shock, still hearing that sound in her head, that terrible popping sound. Why was she the only one that felt anything? David came through the break room door abruptly but Trish barely noticed his loud entry. Oh, wow. Hey, Trish, are you okay? David said awkwardly. It was clear to her that he had come into the break room to get an energy drink out of the vending machine and waste some time on his phone. Trish, I'm talking to you, said David, annoyed at being ignored. I don't know, David. What do you think? I literally just witnessed someone take their own life in our stupid store, and I seem to be the only one who cares. I know that happened yesterday, but everyone is back to business as usual, and the bleach has barely dried on the spot where he fell. David had froze. He had never seen Trish so upset before. He said, I completely understand Trish, but it was just some crazy homeless guy. He was probably so high he didn't even know what he was doing. Trish got up and ran out of the door. Had he always been so cold? So uncaring? They had worked together for about three years, and she thought that they had become friends at and outside of work. But now that she saw this side of him, she was disgusted. 
She was disgusted by everything that she saw now. The place that she had spent the majority of her time felt like the pit of hell. Everyone she talked to was void of any compassion toward the man who fell. Thanks to everyone sharing David's opinion of the homeless man, the police did not even bother to go upstairs and investigate. How had the man gotten upstairs? And more importantly, how long had he been up there? Trish was over everything. She would have called out of work on this day, but because of her absences, she could be fired if she missed work anymore. So, under the ruse of checking on another appliance order, Trish went upstairs to find answers for herself. She climbed the stairs once more, each creak and pop reminding her of the sound she heard from the day before. After she made it to the top of the stairs, she began to search. She did not know what she was looking for, but she knew she needed answers. If not for her, then for the homeless man. She began by checking in the far reaches of the dusty room. She stepped over so many boxes and random metal beams scattered across the floor. She was looking in the part of the room that did not have any appliances in it. She thought of these areas as forgotten by the store because they really were. Old signage and fixtures were shoved wherever they could fit. Why not just throw these things away? She thought. Finally, she noticed something different. In the bottom of one of the dirty corners of drywall, there was a large crack. She bent down to investigate and she got a strong smell that reminded her of the man who had run past her yesterday. Bingo! She said out loud to no one in particular. She reached down and moved the cracked corner of drywall away, revealing a little alcove. She had found where he had been living. The majority of it was covered in items from downstairs that had been snagged. Lanterns and flashlights were still on, illuminating his dwelling for Trish to see. The alcove reminded Trish of the capsule hotel she had seen in one of her favorite animes. Other than the random assortment of junk food, pillows, and blankets, there was something strange in the little alcove. Trish spotted a stack of paper. She reached in and grabbed the stack, pulling it out of the alcove, and she replaced the piece of drywall. Trish quickly noticed that they were letters, crudely scratched on whatever he could find. She skimmed over the one on top and noticed that it was not finished. It was addressed to someone named Mickey, and Trish could tell that it had been the man's son. She was crying before she knew it. A tear hitting the paper told her so. They seemed to be estranged, and she wanted so badly to find Mickey to give him the letters. So, Trish ran down the stairs and showed the letters to her manager. They were quickly ripped from Trish's hands and thrown in the nearby trash can. Those are absolutely filthy! Why would you bring them up here? We do have customers, you know, Trish's manager said in complete disgust. Trish's tears came back and they were falling so fast that she could not stop them. Even with the threat of becoming homeless herself, Trish knew that she could not work there a second longer. She pushed her manager out of the way, grabbing the letters from the trash. I quit, said Trish, and turned to leave with the letters in her hand. It would not be easy to find Mickey, but she knew where to start. If anyone knew whom the homeless man was, it would be the group that hung around the light rail station. Trish left the automatic doors behind her, smiling because she knew that she had made the right decision. I would like to thank Rose Feldstein for helping me with this week's episode and for playing Trish. Please let me know what you thought about this week's episode over on Facebook and Instagram at Stories with a Twang Podcast. If you have any stories you would like me to share on the show, please send them to storieswithatwang at gmail.com. I would also like to thank Freddie Morris for providing more exceptional music this week. Thank you all so much for listening, and remember that a little twang goes a long way. <laughs>